Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Accepted Students events. My name is Gennady Vulach. I'm going to be one of the panelists and one of your moderators for today. So I wanted to just quickly take a moment to welcome everyone and thank you for attending. Uh, this event is basically just going to be a panel of some current students and some alumni from Macaulay who are going to answer your questions about their experiences and just talk about what it's like being a Macaulay student and help you to get to know the program and decide whether or not you should commit here. Um, so to begin, I just want to start by uh, introducing my co-host, Ashley Seeley, if you want to quickly say something. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to Macaulay Honors College's Acceptance Students event. First, I just want to congratulate everyone on just being accepted into Macaulay. And I would also just like to thank all the panelists just for agreeing to take the time to speak to you all about their Macaulay experience. So I just want to, before I introduce myself, I just want to say that this is going to be a very informal event, meaning that this will be a space where you can just basically ask all the questions that you have on your mind. There's almost like no admin here, so it's just us, people who are currently students, people who were students, and people, and you people who we hope will be students. So basically just feel free to drop any questions in the Q&A um, function, and we'll definitely be looking at that throughout the event. And we also made sure to have at least one panelist from every campus, um, just so y'all can be represented. And so you can also just direct any specific campus questions to them. And we also made sure to include people who are involved in a variety of academic and extracurricular activities. So we're gonna start off with the current students panel, just as Gena said, and then we'll, for that's gonna be around 30 minutes, and then we'll move on to the alumni panel. So I'm just gonna give myself a short introduction. So my name is Ashley Seeley. I graduated from Macaulay at Hunter last spring. And right now I'm in graduate school pursuing my master's degree. And I'm gonna be your host for the current students panel. And then I'm gonna pass it on to Gena to host the alumni panel on the second half. So um, that being said, I'm gonna allow all of our current student panelists to come on. And basically I'm gonna allow them to introduce themselves with their name their class year, their campus, and how they are involved in Macaulay. So I'll allow the first person to go and the person on top of my screen is Kristen. So I'm gonna allow her to introduce herself. Hi guys, I'm Kristen. I'm from the Queens campus and I'll be graduating in 2022. Um, I'm majoring in English and secondary education. And I'm involved in a few things on campus. My freshman and sophomore year, I was in the Queens Musical Theater Group and I did two productions with them. And I'm currently the president of Phi Sigma Sigma, which is one of the sororities that we have on campus. Perfect. And now I'm gonna have Pooja introduce herself. Hi everyone, my name is Pooja. I'm a sophomore at Macaulay Hunter and I'll be graduating in 2023. I'm majoring in biology and I'm minoring in psychology. So I'm on the pre-med track. And um, some of the activities that I'm involved in are, I'm in the Hunter student government. I'm on Macaulay Diwane, which is our Bollywood fusion dance team. I'm wearing our, oh, the logo's on the side. Oh, you can't even see the logo. Okay, well, I'm wearing our sweatshirt right now. And I'm also in Macaulay peer mentors. Cool, and we're gonna move on to Sean. Everyone, my name is uh, Sean Abraham. I am a uh, class of 2021, so I'm graduating uh, this semester. I am from the College of Staten Island, represent, woohoo. Um, triple majoring in information systems, uh, business uh, with a concentration in finance, economics, minor in business data analytics. Uh, it's a mouthful, right? But uh, it's, it's a lot. Um, I'm really involved. I'm involved in uh, Macaulay Student Gov, um, Student Gov at CSI treasurer of the finance club at CSI and also VP of information systems club at CSI. Yeah, that's I'm heading off to graduate school in September and I'm heading off to Columbia to do uh, data science there. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks for that. And we're going to have Elise introduce herself. Hi, everyone. My name is Marie Elise and I am a junior at Lehman College. I'm double majoring in economics and business administration with a concentration in finance. And um, I'm the co-president of the Macaulay Diversity Initiative. And when I was a freshman and sophomore, I was a part of the Macaulay Scholars Council. 
Thank you. And now we're going to have Dylan introduce himself. Hi, everyone. My name is Dylan. I'm a senior at John Jay, so I'll be graduating this May. Uh, my majors are political science and computer science. And on campus, I'm involved in the Macaulay student government. And I also played on John Jay men's volleyball team for the past three years, four years. Whatever. Cool. And last but not least, we're going to have Gana introduce himself. So hi, guys. I know you've literally never seen of me or heard of me. And this is a completely new introduction. But uh, my name is Gena. I'm a Brooklyn College class of 2022, meaning I'm a junior. Uh, I am involved in Macaulay student government. I'm the current president. I'm involved as the vice president of the pre-health club. And I also at one point did one production with the theater club. So I am what we call well-rounded. Okay, perfect. So um, basically everyone is involved in an extracurricular activity at Macaulay or at their home campus. So I just wanted to start off with our first question, which is how did you, how and where did you find community at Macaulay on or at your home campus? Like, how did you go about doing it? And, you know, yeah. And anyone could start off if anything. I can start. Um, so when I entered college, I really wanted to get involved in the community. I was really um, excited to, you know, join a really a smaller campus than uh, John Jay, which is really big. And our Macaulay size is only 20 students at John Jay. Um, so I was really excited and I really wanted to get to know the people. Um, and that led me to apply or, you know, join the Macaulay Scholars Council, uh, run for election, I guess. And um, my first year I got elected. So that was just a really amazing opportunity to meet people from every campus and, um, you know, get, get to know what's going on everywhere else. Um, and that kind of really just solidified the like Macaulay community for me. Um, and then in my home campus, I played volleyball in high school and um, I, the opportunity was there to play in college. And it kind of just, it was something that I never really expected, but joining the athletics program at John Jay um, introduced me to a lot of people and some of my best friends now are from athletics. So those two organizations that I'm a part of really just um, allowed me to meet different people and get to know my community. So it was really amazing experiences. Cool, thank you for sharing that. Does anyone, Jenna, you were you gonna say something? Yeah, I had a somewhat similar story. When I first went into college my freshman year, I thought, oh, I'm pre-med. This is a really strong like uh, academic thing. I'm not gonna have time for extracurriculars. And then I got an email that was basically saying, hey, join the Scholars Council. So I put my name in the lot, I got elected. And then from there, it basically opened the door to the entire Macaulay community. So now I'm involved with things like the pre-health club and other things. And I actually found community, funnily enough, not at my home campus so strongly, but mostly I found it with the Macaulay community. So because the Scholars Council has representatives from of all eight campuses, I actually got to meet people like Dylan and Sean and uh, at least fairly early on. So I actually got to know people from all around the campuses. So it was actually pretty, it was, it was a good way to get involved. And if I may add, um, you know, coming, uh, coming from a private school where it's really small uh, community and then going on to Macaulay and being a part of a, a smaller, but uh, more, intimate community I, I think that's where macaulay really shines you know being able to talk to one another it's a small cohort small class sizes and that's really the uh benefit of the uh, program and i think many of us made our uh, connections through i believe the community day where we uh, saw many of the clubs and activities as well as you know a lot of the events that we attended and, and um, i think that's where macaulay really shines And um, Kristen, I feel like it would also be interesting if you could talk about, you know, Queens College and, you know, the sororities that are also on that campus, which are very big there. Yeah, definitely. I know um, not, I don't know if any of the other campuses have Greek life. I know a lot of CUNY campuses don't. Um, I went into college knowing I definitely wanted to get involved in my home campus life. Um, and both my parents were in Greek life at Queens College as well. So I knew I definitely wanted to get involved. And we have so many, I guess, options to choose from for Greek life. We have, um, so I'm in one of the national, we have three national Panhellenic sororities. And those are like 
all women's organizations, you know, ones that you hear about on like social media often. We have multicultural uh, sororities. We have like just local chapters that have been um, opened at Queens College. I'm sorry if you can hear my um, puppy in the background. Um, but that's really, it was just like a really great experience. You know, you make friends in your own org and like in Greek life in general. Um, and what's nice about it is that you also get other Macaulay students in Greek life. Our former president was a Macaulay student and we have a bunch of freshmen who just joined Phi Sig who are in Macaulay. So it's nice that we can all kind of bond over that too. Perfect, thank you for answering that question, everyone. And if no one else has anything else to um, add, I'll move on to the next question. So academically, what has your experience as a student been like at your home campus and at Macaulay? So I hear that a lot of people are double majoring or even triple majoring or even have minors. So how do you manage all of that? And how did you even you know, go about determining that you wanted to study multiple things? So I'll start off with Sean, since you know the triple major is what caught my eye, so. Um, it was more of, a, you know, the, the one thing that I love about our program in general, and I think everyone can attest to this, is the fact that our advisors are there for you. And, you know, the fact that even right now through remote, um, I'm right now, as we're speaking, I'm texting my advisor, asking her, she's asking about scheduling and whatnot. And uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I have to, we're talking at the same time, multitasking, that's the Zoom life. But I mean, the fact that we're able to uh, communicate and talk to our advisors and, you know, they'll guide you, they'll, they'll shape you. And um, in terms of double majoring, triple majoring, you know, my, when I came into Macaulay, I thought, listen, I'm going to do comp side. This is what I'm going to do. But with the seminar classes, which you'll hear about hopefully later on today, you'll learn that there's more interest. There's a lot of other stuff that interested me. And, you know, through Macaulay, I learned, listen, I don't need to go here doing one major. I can come out and do two majors. And a lot of my friends, they're doing the same thing. They're double, they're tripling. I have a friend who's actually doing six majors and uh, he's, uh, he, he's trying to graduate this semester with six majors. So uh, that's the thing about Macaulay, you know, uh, you're able to do whatever you want, whatever your heart desires, Macaulay's there and they will support you 110%. Perfect. And Dylan, do you want to add anything? Because I think I also heard that you said you double majored. Yeah, definitely. I mean, kind of like what Sean was saying, Macaulay gave a really amazing opportunity to double major in political science and computer science. At a lot of schools, I wouldn't have been able to do that. And these are just two interests that I had coming in. I actually want to go into like um, technology policy. So that's kind of how those two intersect for me. But something really uh, important about Macaulay that they were able to provide me with is um, I also have, want to focus on international relations and international politics. So um, through other campuses, through Hunter specifically, I was able to take Russian classes for my whole four years. Um, and that's something that I, I wouldn't have been able to do at other schools. I can take, you can take classes at any of the eight campuses you want through e-permits. And that's something that's, that has just really enhanced my academic experience because it's made me really marketable in one sense because I have this new language skill and it just kind of rounded out my interest in international affairs and kind of pulled together political science, computer science and my language skills. And if I, if I can add just one thing, it's not mandatory. I mean, I hope no one uh, you know comes off it. It's not mandatory to double major. You can do one major and still you know, continue school and do whatever you want. It's, it's just that kids like me, you know, they want a double major, triple major. You can um, 100% just do one major and call it a day. That's, that's fine as well. There's no push for that. Yeah, I'd just like to add on, like I'm a pre-med student. So a lot of my classes are heavy, like science classes. But like because we're in Macaulay and we're not kind of like restricted to take classes because of a certain like financial need to like be on a certain major, you kind of have the ability to take a lot of different classes and explore. And your Macaulay seminar classes definitely help with that. It helped me like open myself up to a lot of humanities classes. But at the same time, you can just take a class just to try it. You don't have to major in it. You don't have to minor in it. Like you have time to explore different things. And I will quickly say on that topic, kind of bridging all of that. Um, so the advisors are actually especially helpful for that because if you're not sure specifically what you wanna go into or you're really interested in exploring a lot of different options, you can talk with your advisor and you can say, hey, I'm interested in this major, what do you recommend I do? And maybe they can point you towards an intro class or maybe they can say, hey, a triple major is kind of a lot, especially if you're doing 
a chemistry triple major with two minors, you know, like, so your advisor can actually help guide you towards or away from things that can hurt or help you. And there's someone who can really talk to you through those things. And I wholeheartedly agree with the flexibility Macaulay gives you because then you're able to just explore every option. I think if you're not 100% sure what you want to do, I think Macaulay is a great opportunity to have that freedom to explore everything you want to do. Okay, perfect. And I'm going to also give Brittany an opportunity just to introduce herself. She's our Baruch representative who just hopped on. Hi, everyone. My name is Brittany. I am a sophomore at Baruch College. I'm part of the graduating class of 2023, so still got a good two years left. Um, <laughs> my major is financial mathematics with a minor in IDC, as well as a potential minor in women and gender studies. Perfect, cool. So, um, we were on the topic of Macaulay seminars, so I just wanted to ask the sophomores and the juniors who, you know, it's, it COVID hit and, you know, seminars turned online. So how has it been completing those seminars online and how do you form and maintain connections with your Macaulay classmates? So I know that, Elise, you were a sophomore last year, so do you want to start us off? Yeah, definitely. Um, so I was in the middle of our fourth seminar last uh, last spring. Um, and of course, it was just kind of a big halt um, with COVID happening. Um, so one thing that my entire class did is we actually just created a WhatsApp group chat and there we were able to communicate, um, especially with our teacher um, about assignments, about things, uh, even like COVID related, since now our class had kind of turned into like studying COVID in New York City, like real time. Um, but I definitely feel like um, the outlets to use like WhatsApp and sometimes even using Slack um, definitely helps with our class, help us stay connected and um, help us kind of just carry on the class regardless of like um, COVID. Any other people who were sophomores or juniors last year? I mean, sophomore is last year or freshman last year? I was um, a sophomore last year and same with us. We stayed connected through WhatsApp for our whole like um, 2022 class. We have a big group chat and we talk to each other in that. I'd say I got really um, lucky with our professor. I was in seminar four at the time as well when we transitioned. And she was super easy going about it. We just had um, meetings one or two times a week and we got to work independently pretty much because in the fourth seminar, you do work independently for a lot of it. At least for mine, we were doing a lot of our own like work and research and had our own project. Um, and the professor would do like one-on-one -on -one meetings just to check up on us, um, you know, even talk to us about things outside of class and make sure we were doing well. So. Yeah, I had a good experience for the seminars and going online. Um, just going on top of that, I know for my seminar this semester, it's uh, my fourth one. So I'm on my last one. Um, it's online as everything is at Baruch and every other CUNY across Macaulay. Um, pretty much my professor, she did it so that it was one day we were uh, synchronous. So we were all together like in live lecture online through Zoom. And then uh, another day in the week, uh, she would do asynchronous where we don't have class and she just gives us like a video to watch or she's like, oh, watch this like on Netflix and then write a response about it. And then we'd have to turn in a response by like noon. And so pretty much um, that was a whole experience in itself. I mean, just the whole online platform was something new, but being able to have that flexibility was something that I enjoyed. And also what we're doing in her class is she's having, she has the capability to have more guest lecturers. So in person, I feel like it would have been more like, you know, lecture basic. Like it would have been more her talking and her teaching us about New York City and stuff. But now that everything's online and on Zoom, she's been able to bring in guest lecturers like every week. So people from actual businesses and companies to come speak to us. Okay, perfect. So um, 
I see a lot of questions are coming into chats so, and in the Q&A function, so I'm just going through them. But one that caught my eye is, how do you manage the stress of maintaining the Macaulay um, GPA requirement? So I know that Macaulay's, um, at least when I was there, was about 3.5 you have to maintain. And just, you know, I understand that that could be very stressful. So how have you gone about, you know, managing that stress? So I can speak on this. It definitely is uh, something you have to work on and it's something you have to keep on top of, but it's by no means uh, something that's like impossible. Uh, so I will say first and foremost, it's not like this hard rule. You drop to a 3.4, you're cut off, you're gone forever. They do actually have something that I believe they call it like academic probation, something like that, where if you drop below 3.5 for a semester, your advisor will basically reach out to you and be like, hey, I saw some of your grades were slipping. What's going on? How can I help? Should I refer you to the tutoring center? Is there something? Uh, oh, actually, I think it was renamed to academic first aid. Yeah. Uh, and it's uh, basically they're going to not just say, hey, you dropped your GPA out. It's more of like, hey, we see that something's going on. Let's check in. What can I do to help you? And there's a lot of um, different opportunities. So a, a, alongside your resources from your home campus, Macaulay has their own writing specialist. They have like clubs like uh, like pre-health, for example, hosts weekly study sessions for science topics. So there's a you get basically the resources of two campuses to help you with your academics. And Pooja, did you want to say something also? I saw that you light it up. Yeah, I just wanted to add on that the advisors are great people to kind of talk to when you're having like a stressful time. I remember like my freshman year when we were in person, like we would usually go to the Macaulay Honors Lounge to study and just like chill in between classes. And that's right next to our advisors at Hunter. And if I was just bored, or if I had like a lot going on, I just went to my advisor's office and just like, she has a hula hoop in there. And we would just like hula hoop, like it was so chill. So like just make a nice like community of friends and like, you know, talk to your advisors and it's like a great way to de-stress. Yeah, and just to echo what Gunna said, just like, Macaulay isn't just gonna kick you out of you, like, you know, if your GPA drops below the requirement. Cause even like, I'm not gonna lie, um, I took Orgo, that's when I was trying to be pre-med and it wasn't really my thing and it dropped my GPA. But, you know, just my, um, my advisor just came to me. He was like, you know, what's going on? You know, we can work with together, you know, in, to, in order to improve this GPA. And I stayed in the program, obviously. And, you know, everything's fine now. I actually laugh at it thinking back, you know, or go, why was I taking that class in the first place anyway? But um, yeah, it's just like, it's trial and error where Macaulay works together, you know, just to, they work with you to make sure you're staying in the program and to make sure that, you know, you're enjoying yourself also, so. Perfect, so let's move into the next question, just looking at questions. So this question is, how was your life outside of, the, outside of being in class? So what extra events slash programs Macaulay have slash introduce you to? So this kind of also, maybe we can also talk about the um, events that Macaulay has, like um, the freshman events or the sophomore events. I'm forgetting the names exactly, but does anyone want to start off with that? Uh, okay, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say that, like, in the beginning of the year, you're going to have orientation, which is where you kind of meet your, you get, like, a Macaulay peer mentor, and you meet them, you meet, like, a group of students with, who come from, like, all the different Macaulay campuses, and you kind of stay connected with them throughout the year so that you have, like, a network of friends outside of your home campus, and do, like, the orientation you're supposed to like do different activities it's called outward bound in person it would have been like an actual trip to I think it was Lehman and you would go and do a whole bunch of activities and super fun but they're trying to like do it online now so you'll still get like a similar experience and sorry I think I cut Sean off yeah no uh you said it perfectly and also um like in my local campus local Macaulay campus we uh they also pair you up with a older like junior or senior um someone that you can talk to and um, ask any questions um regarding any of your classes and events also there's a lot of um like local campus events i know again for staten island our advisor planned a lot of local um stuff and um like things we can do every thursday we would always meet up with our uh, cohort like i believe 2 30 or 3 30 um during club hours it's 
as that that's what it's called at CSI. And we would meet up um, and basically just, you know, talk to our cohort and there would be activities for us to do. And that was a great way for us to bond for the first uh, two years at, uh, uh, at Macaulay. So uh, definitely plenty of things um, we can do and you guys can do when you guys come into the program. I feel like also on top of that, it's joining clubs. I mean, like, I feel like it's easier said than done because it's like, oh my gosh, I'm in this new program. I don't know if I'm going to go into this club. Like, will they even like, <laughs> like me, you know, there's like a whole bunch of questions that run through your head and you're like, I don't know, like, should I really put myself out there? Put yourself out there. It's college. Nobody's there to be like, oh, like, who is this? Like, why are they here? No, like everybody's here to be friends. Everybody's here to meet new people, to make connections, to network. That's always a big word at Baruch. Network, make those connections. Everybody's there to like help each other. Nobody's there to really be mean. And if somebody is mean, then that's like, you know, that's a different story. But most of the time, people in clubs, they're going to be very nice. They're going to be very welcoming because they want to pass on what they're doing onto the future generations. We wanna pass it on to the future classes. And so joining clubs is the best way to get involved in Macaulay to meet new people across all campuses. And it's really a good way to put yourself out there as well. Also kind of going off what Sean was saying about the local campus events. I know at least for John Jay, like um, we're really integrated with our honors program and every semester the honors program has like tons of events for students. I like did kayaking on Hudson. They also do like trips. I went to DC with them. I know they have a ski trip. So like they do a bunch of like just fun events just for students to enjoy. And there's like a ton of them throughout the semester. Okay, perfect. So the next question I'm gonna ask, which is from the Q&A function is, how has, it been get, how has it been getting internships now that everything is virtual? I'm gonna pass this question on to Elise because I know she's the queen of internships and she has, she has a lot of expertise in this area. So Elise, take it off. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, so funny enough, my first internship was actually at Macaulay under career development where I was able to just kind of post opportunities that Macaulay students could apply for. So that's kind of just where I, you know, was able to further figure out where I wanted to work after that. Um, so now going into last summer, I was working at JP Morgan and um, KPMG, and I didn't get them necessarily through Macaulay, but what I did get through Macaulay was kind of just the skill set, um, the even like email communication etiquette was really important with those roles because you are talking to professionals, um, you're talking to recruiters. Um, so I was able to pick up some soft skills from there and then apply them to those internships. Um, and also a really good thing that CUNY in general has is a new real estate um, internship that I was able to be a part of. Um, and it doesn't matter if you're like a junior, you don't have to be a junior, you don't have to be a senior. I worked with um, students who are even freshmen and we were able to just kind of work together on um, a live deal, but um, I definitely feel like Macaulay has a good, um, they have good relationships with uh, companies. They have spots that would just be like for a Macaulay student, you still have to apply, but just having like, knowing that there's a seat that's just dedicated for Macaulay students, say at a law firm or even Morgan Stanley, I think that really speaks volumes. Yeah, if I can add to that, um, and this is like the biggest pro point about Macaulay is it's, you get the best of both worlds. Um, local campuses, they like to use a program called Handshake, which is used by many Ivy League schools. And then Macaulay also has their own career path. So you get to uh, look at both internships, both opportunities offered at your local campus, as well as at Macaulay. That's one. Two, um, usually your advisor will collect your resume. So my advisor has my uh, resume. I have two advisors, one for uh, internships and one for uh, you know academic advisement. And my advisor will be just sending out my resume to companies and internships. And she'll be like, hey, Sean, listen, uh, like for example, I interned at Merrill Lynch. She, um, she sent it out without me knowing. She was like, you know, listen, they, they love you. Do you want to come? Please come and join them. And um, I had an internship set up without me even lifting a finger. And uh, I mean, that's the coolest thing about Macaulay. Um, a lot of my friends um, through Macaulay were hooked up with the internship at the MTA, uh, Port Authority, 
um, New York City agencies, the controller's office. And there's just so many internships opportunities that are offered directly to Macaulay students. And that's all like thanks to the advisors and through our custom software career path and handshake, which are two great assets when finding internships. And that's a big plus point with Macaulay. Um, just to add on, our advisors and our like staff are great for, for helping us find internships. But on top of that, the Macaulay community itself is like super helpful. Because when I was a freshman, I talked to a lot of upperclassmen and they recommended this program to me called SCORE at Memorial Sloan Kettering, which is a really cool like summer research program. And so like they kind of helped me like write my application. They looked it over for me and then I sent it to my advisors to look it over for me too. So really talking to like older students and seeing what they did and see what they recommend is a great way to find internships too. Hey, if anyone doesn't have anything else to add, I'm going to be looking through the questions just to see what there is to be answered. So have any of you studied abroad at all? I'm not sure if you had the chance to before, um, you know, the pandemic started. So, um, oh, Dylan, go ahead. Sorry. Um, I'm talking a lot. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, I actually studied abroad twice. Um, I studied abroad for uh, in two summers, once right after my freshman year and then once right after my sophomore year. Um, and they were amazing experiences. I mean, I got to do them. One was through Hunter College, um, which was in the Baltics, which is like Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia, um, which was an awesome experience. I mean, I can't like, you always hear how study abroad's amazing and I would argue that it's true. Um, and obviously Macaulay helps with a lot of things, including how to fund that. And then um, my second year, after my second year, I studied abroad in Russia, mostly Moscow. And that was also an amazing experience, which I mean, I could talk more about, but it's just like, I just studied um, international politics and economics in Russia. So they were really amazing experiences. Okay, I think I'll add now. Um, so I, um, last year I got um, a summer uh, study abroad session at the London School of Economics. And um, I was actually supposed to attend last summer because of COVID, it got moved to this summer. But that was uh, another program that I was offered uh, to study abroad through Macaulay. So again, like a prestigious institution that was connected to Macaulay. And uh, I mean, there's so many opportunities. I have friends who went to Sweden, uh, friends who uh, went to the Galapagos Islands and uh, all paid through the study abroad program at Macaulay. So it, it's, it's really awesome. And, and that's something I recommend everyone to take advantage of because of the many opportunities offered through uh, Macaulay. And I can even add, so um, I actually did study abroad right before the pandemic started. So I did it in December, 2019 um, to January and I went to Australia and basically I chose the most expensive place to go just because I wanted, I'd never been out the country before and I wanted to go big since Macaulay was gonna pay for it. And it was great, honestly, like I didn't, they helped me apply for outside scholarships, inside scholarships. The whole trip was about 6,000 and I only paid about like a couple hundred just with all my scholarships combined just because of the support that Macaulay provides. And it was a great experience. Like I would do it again, honestly. And I definitely recommend for, you know, all Macaulay students to study abroad at least once, so. And if no one else has anything to add, let's look into some more questions. And this panel will end in about six minutes, the current students panel. So do, 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 do. I guess one question I can ask in the meanwhile is thinking back to when you were making your college decisions as a high school student, what ultimately made you decide to go to Macaulay? So what was your deciding factor? And I can start off with, um, oh, Gana, you're, go for it. Yeah, um, I will say the, probably the biggest thing for me was the, initially, just before I even got into the program, it was the tuition waiver because I knew when I was going into, uh, you know, when I was going into this, I wanted to go to med school. And for those of you who don't know, and I'm sure you all do, medical school costs quite a pretty penny. So, you know, I thought it was extremely cost effective going to Macaulay because I'm like, okay, I'll save a lot of money. And then actually getting into the program, it was a lot more than just saving a lot of money. It's actually really 
like getting involved my freshman year, meeting people from all over Macaulay, like I really just have so many friends from other campuses and just knowing people in all aspects of, you know, people through finance, people in science, people in math, people in everywhere. So it was just really rewarding meeting all these different people and just knowing like, I have a huge network now and I have all these amazing connections. And also I have a lot of people like me, like the amount of psych major pre-med people I've met is kind of scary. I thought I was being original. Turns out no, but it doesn't matter because they're all great people. <laughs> And Kristen, do you want to answer the question as well? Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm going to say the same thing. Originally, it was um, the tuition waiver for me as well. And um, I feel like I'm going to be brutally honest. I was one of those people who originally, when I was thinking about college, I wanted to go to a big state school. I did cheer in high school. I was really big on school spirit. Um, so I was unsure about Macaulay, even when I went to my own accepted students day after I was like, it seems it, like it seems cool, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know if that's necessarily the direction I wanted to go into, but I do want to go to grad school as an education major. If you're going to be teaching, you have to get a master's. Um, and so I was like, you know what, like, why not? My parents went to Queens. They had a good time. Like, uh, you know, I, I'll save the money for grad school and, um, you know, my first year I was kind of like warming up to things and everything, but when I started getting involved and like making friends with other Macaulay students, um, joining the sorority, uh, it ended up being probably one of the best decisions I could have made. I have a friend who's at a big state school and she's like, you're like, she was like, you would never know that like you weren't at a big state school. Like, you know, you're doing so many different things. Like you have so many different opportunities. Like, so, I mean, if you're like, hesitant because you think that you might not be able to get like the college experience if you want I'd say um it's all about what you make of it like go and you kind of have to create your own path you know get in as other people said today get involved do clubs put yourself out there and you will get the college experience you want and Pooja do you want to answer the question now as well yeah, I wanted to add on that. Um, I think dorming in the city was a great fact, a huge factor into like why I chose Macaulay. Um, I go to Hunter, so you get to dorm at Brookdale for your first two years. And the community of Brookdale is like amazing. I made a lot of my like really close friends there. We go to a lot of our classes together. So I think living in Manhattan was a great like appealing factor to Macaulay. Add on to that, um, I would say one of my main decisions <clears throat> for coming to Macaulay was that like it is located in New York City and like the opportunities that come with that. Because if you're like out of school somewhere else, like not in the city, you can't take the, um, advantage of these internships during like your semesters. And for me, that was really important because um, like I guess a year ago now, I got an internship with the State Department at the United Nations during like the fall semester. So I was able to go to school and um, do my internship full time, which was really a unique experience. And I mean, kind of just also like what everyone else said, there's, it's a really great opportunity to, you know, have the tuition waiver. And I also want to go to grad school. So that's really important in my decision as well. Annalise, do you want to also answer the question as well? Um, yeah, for me, um, as Dylan said, um, being in the city, being able to do internships, um, I'm interested in finance economics. So I was like, yeah, I want to, be in like you know the financial district um and something that um i was able to speak to my guidance counselor about um just due to the path that i wanted to go to is that you know necessarily where you go for undergrad um you don't need to go to such a big name school um just because we all like most of the majors are the same so something that i was able to get out of just going to macaulay is that if i want to go to an ivy league um if i want to go to a big state school um i can still do that and um there would be a lot more weight with that um mba degree um so that's how i got my choice well if i can add I, I feel like you know macaulay itself is an elite school and i think you know the fact that it is uh very it's it's in new york city so it's in the center of the world you know it's the center of everything that's happening and i was just mentioning in the chat I think one of the big points is the free laptop. I mean, I've never 
owned my own computer. I, I used a desktop computer before college that was shared with like five other members of my family. And now I have a MacBook that I'm using it right now that I'm using right now. And it's a, it's a MacBook. I mean, who would have thought you would have gotten a free laptop uh, or a, a $1,000, $1,200 MacBook. I mean, that that's, what's awesome about this uh, program. You know, the, the to tuition school uh, scholarship and the uh, MacBook. And Brittany, did you answer the question or um, no, I'm not sure if you did. No, I didn't, but I was just kind of going off in the chat about how I'm using my laptop from Macaulay as well. I mean, it's something that when I, I remember I was in high school and I applied, I didn't even think I was going to get in because it's, it was competitive in my school. A whole bunch of people had applied and I'm over here like, you know what, I'll apply and I'll see what happens. And I ended up getting in through Baruch and I remember I was between Macaulay and another college that was almost offering me full tuition. But when I thought about it, I was like, I've always wanted to be in the city. I've always wanted to, in a sense, be closer to my family because I am a very family oriented person. So the commute wasn't really like a problem for me. The MacBook, I mean, that's something that we're all over here talking about right now. Like, how can we forget the MacBook? And Honestly, like the sense of community that you feel in Macaulay and even though everything's online, you still feel that community. I know for one, like I'm in MDI, Macaulay Diversity Initiative, um, and I love the club so much. I love the board, like Elise is over here sending me a heart. I love like, I just love being a part of that club and being able to see all of our events and like ideas come to life. And so pretty much Macaulay, even though you know, there may be like, oh, it's not a state school. Oh, like, you know, I'm not dorming, you know, regardless of all that, I was able to, I'm still able to feel that sense of community, that sense of like, I don't know, pride to be in Macaulay, to be able to do what I want to do. And also I'm saving money and saving money for a potential, like, you know, master's degree, graduate program, and I'm able to do what I love. Perfect. And I think that's a perfect way just to end the current students panel. I would like to thank all of our current student panelists just for speaking so candidly about their Macaulay experience. I really feel like it was really helpful and I hope you guys also feel like it's really helpful as well. So um, if the current students are able to stay on, they can stay on, but with their cameras off just to answer questions in the background. But now Gena is going to start to lead us off into our alumni panel. All right, so um, you guys once again have to hear my voice. No one is ever tired of it and it does not go on for hours. But in order to give you guys just a quick second away from it, I want to start by having all of our alumni please turn your cameras on, show us who you are, and uh, if we could briefly just introduce yourselves. So um, I'd like to start with uh, Sama's at the top of my screen. Could you just give us your name, your class, your campus, and how you were involved at Macaulay? Hello, uh, I'm Sama Islam. I was uh, a student at City College, as well as the um, CUNY BA program, which is basically where you make your own major. Um, and as for what I was involved in, <laughs> what was I not involved in? Um, I was president of the Scholars Council um, for a couple of years. I was on it since I was a freshman. Um, I was president of CHIMP, which is this um, City College's mentorship program. I was a peer mentor also at Macaulay. I was on the fencing team at City College and probably some other stuff that I don't remember, <laughs> but yeah. Okay, next on my screen is uh, Kasia. Hi, I'm Kasia Wilson, John J. Class of 2019. Um, I, my major was Law and Society and I wasn't really involved on the MHC campus. I was more involved at my home campus, so I can answer questions about that, but that's because I worked. So people who have questions about working in Macaulay, I got you. Okay, and uh, Vicky. Hi, everyone. My name is Vicky Spiras. I graduated from Brew College with my bachelor's degree in accounting, and I had minors in Spanish and New York City studies as everyone does with Macaulay, um, as well as a concentration philosophy. I went back to Baruch the following year to get my master's in tax. I was involved with Baruch and Macaulay at the same time. So at Baruch, I was president of a few clubs, uh, the pre-law society on campus, the tax society during my master's, 
Um, and at Macaulay, I was involved with the Macaulay Messenger, which is the newspaper that Macaulay publishes by students, as well as the Gastronomy Club, which is the food club, not the Astronomy Club. We didn't do anything in space. So I'm just putting that out there in case um, you've ever wondered about gastronomy. Um, since graduation, I passed my CPA exam, which is the certified public accountancy exam, a four part exam to become a certified public accountant. And I've been working as an international tax associate in a public accounting firm since June of last year. Okay, awesome. So thank you for that intro. So um, let's just start with the kind of overarching question. So uh, can you guys just quickly talk about your academic journey? When you came into Macaulay, were you already set on a career path? Did your major or your path change at some point? Was there like a struggle point that then changed for you? How did that work with Macaulay? So when I personally came to Macaulay, I was dead set on being a doctor or a dentist. And um, now I'm at Columbia doing occupational therapy, which is still, you know, a health profession and still like at the medical school campus. But um, I decided that I think maybe like my junior year. So for like the first two years, I was doing the really hard STEM. Uh, I was on like the pre-med, pre-dental track. Um, and the reason why I ended up changing it was because I was extremely unhappy um, City College is very much known for its engineering program and for um, health sciences. And so you can imagine they were really tough. And obviously that wasn't something that kind of put me off from the career choice. It was just that I wasn't happy, like I said. So um, I ended up deciding that I would do OT instead, which kind of combined like the psychological aspects of healthcare and as well as like the science aspects. So. Uh, and it was all thanks to my Macaulay advisors and people who were at Macaulay who kind of helped guide me through this rough patch um, and helped me find other options. Uh, really quick before we move on, uh, Ashley, I just want to give you a chance to reintroduce yourself because uh, I missed that earlier. <laughs> Sure, no problem. Um, so my name is Ashley. I was at Macaulay at Hunter. I graduated last spring. Um, I had a minor, a major in human biology and a double minor in public health and public policy. And I was one of the co-founders of the Macaulay Diversity Initiative alongside Elise. And I was also involved in Peer Health Exchange, which is um, a club uh, at Hunter College where basically we just go into New York City high schools and teach health education on a weekly basis. So. And was your academic journey also kind of like smooth or did you also have some changes throughout? Oh no, my academic journey was not smooth. So um, I came, I'm trying to think back, I came into college as a neuroscience major. And then I realized I didn't really like that. So then I switched to psychology. Then I realized that wasn't really for me. So then I switched to biology and I realized that wasn't for me. And then I switched to human biology. So. Um, yeah, basically Macaulay is very accommodating about, you know, my specific circumstances, me just changing my interests around a lot. And that was totally, that was great for me because I'm someone like, I like to explore my interests before setting, getting set on something. And then by the time of my junior year, I, by my soft, under my sophomore year, I should say, I really realized I was interested in public health. So that's when I declared my minor in public health and since then, it's been like smooth sailing, just like finding something that I really like. And just like even realizing by my senior year that I was also interested in business, which is why right now I'm also um, pursuing my master's in health administration at Columbia University. So that health administration is basically just like, you know, the business side of healthcare and hospitals. So, you know, it's cool to be able to do that. And Macaulay helped a lot with just me finding that path, so. Okay, uh, so moving on, um, Kasia, you talked about working and I see that there are a couple of questions about like working in Macaulay. Could you talk about that experience and like if anyone else wants to weigh in on how Macaulay prepared you for the working world, if any of you got involved there. Sure, can you guys hear me clearly? Or am I muffled? Okay. Um, yeah, I I started working, well, I was already working like a very small job when I first applied to Macaulay, um, but after my freshman year at John Jay, I started working at a hospital and I still work at that hospital. 
um, even given all the current world situations. And honestly, it is it was very challenging. I will not lie. Like I'm a straight straighter. I'm a straight shooter. <laughs> and it was difficult at first, but I will tell you that it forces you to develop a very strong worth work ethic because of the Macaulay requirements, the GPA requirements. You know, you know that there's stuff that you have to get done and you just you develop strong accountability skills, organizational skills, and it's very doable. I've been doing it for a long time now at this point, and it reflects well on you in the later end. Because for example, I'm in law school and on my resume, I have that I've been working straight through undergrad and while in law school. And when I'm at interviews, they're like, wow, you were really doing this. And I was like, yes, I might've been out of my house seven days a week or six days a week, but you know, it shows that if, if you wanna get something done, you will. And it shows that you are set apart from others, which Macaulay already does for you on your applications and your resume. So it's doable. You just have to really persevere through it and work hard. I also worked um, throughout the four years of my um, undergrad. I worked as a gymnastics coach. So um, it was very manageable to me, honestly, just like well, mainly because my job was very flexible. They realized I was in college. So I was able to choose like the hours that I was working. But um, just time management was a lot of help, just making sure I had time to study and making sure I had time to, um, you know, do my extracurricular activities also. And um, yeah, I just feel like it's manageable. And Macaulay, definitely do what's best for you. If your course load is very intensive, you know, be aware of that. But um, it's definitely possible to work on um, during Macaulay. I um, interned throughout my years at Macaulay Baruch. And if you've heard or seen Baruch, it pretty much looks like a business. Everyone is always wearing the business attire, walking around with suitcases. No one, no one will ever um, walk around Baruch in pajamas. We're all just looking as though we're going to work, even if it's a classroom. So that that was a perk, I think, of Brooks that was drilled into me from the start, because um, although I was initially on a pre-law track, I uh, fell in love with accounting <laughs> and I drifted more towards that side, still incorporating law classes and the law society into, into my coursework. But um, I did internships in accounting, uh, even one abroad after studying abroad with Macaulay's in uh, my junior year, which was, which was really great. But um, the, the work-life balance, especially when you hear people like Casey who are going in or working straight shots, it is doable because you have the support from your home campus as well as Macaulay, which is our own you know, exclusive type of campus that, that uh, you can always turn to when you're, you know, you need somewhere to go in the beautiful uh, Upper West Side, um, Lincoln Center, Columbus Circle. It's just a really, really great area. And when you're there, you're in your own bubble with support, which I think was my saving grace for the four years. I will say also really quickly, I am also working. I'm currently as a student working and there's definitely like, you don't even have to ask for support before I register for classes. My advisors send out a form that basically says like, hey, what classes are you registering for? How many credits are you taking, et cetera? And one of the questions they ask is like, are you working? Are you doing other things? Your advisors will actively check in on you and see like, hey, you're doing a lot this semester. How can I help you? What do you need help with? Like they will keep an eye on you. And it's not just that you have to ask for support, but it's also you will absorb it. Like they will just throw support at you. So I think that's definitely something that needs to be said. Um, kind of going to another side of that, all of you guys are in some form of grad school or, you know, somewhere in that realm. So could you guys talk about how you feel Macaulay prepared you for that, for the application process, for the experience of grad school? Do you feel supported enough for it? Sama, if you wanna start. Oh, sure. 
Um, honestly, I don't think anything can ever prepare you for how intense grad school is. Nothing can pre prepare, like, you know, going to grad school or professional school or whatever it is that it's going to be hard. But when you get there, you realize, oh, it's so much worse. But you are able to get in the door because Macaulay helps you out. So like, I remember when I was doing all my like scholarship essays and like, you know, personal statements for school and whatnot, I had so much help from so many people at Macaulay and also at City College. It was fantastic. Like I pestered the writing specialist so much. God bless that man. <laughs> I had him read it maybe like three or four times. And it wasn't just him. I pestered um, my advisor at City. I pestered um, someone else at Macaulay. I had like three or four eyes on all my personal statements, all my essays, and they were happy to do it. It was a good time. And because of that support I had, my personal statement was just fantastic. And now I'm at Columbia. So like, yeah, you, you will never be prepared for how intense it is, but you will get there and you'll be fine because you do end up having a, a sort of work ethic that is not comparable to any other student that is not in Macaulay. Um, and that will make you shine very brightly when you're at grad school and you'll get through it. Yeah. Um, I can also add when I was applying to grad school, um, I applied to about seven schools and I realized that like the, my, I didn't realize I had to pay for um, graduate school applications until you know I was actually applying to them. And Macaulay actually had like the scholarship thing where basically um, they would cover your graduate school expenses, including your GRE, if you just basically applied for the money. So basically, uh, my graduate school fees, the like 90% were covered, which was great because that was basically saving money for me. And um, yeah, I mean, Macaulay just really helped me a lot. My advisor was reading over my essays a lot, just reading over my personal statements and just even my resume, just to make sure, you know, it was like tailored to each school. And yeah, without those resources, you know, I don't think I would be where I'm at now, so. Yeah, I, I honestly can say, like, there's no way I would have been able to make it through undergrad without my Macaulay advisor. I, I went to that woman for everything. Adrian Fitzgerald is complete chef's kiss. Okay. And they are with you every step of the way. Like Ashley was just saying, like when it comes to your grad school applications, they're saying, okay, well, this is what you need. Also, they help you throughout college. They're helping you register for your classes. They'll help get you registered early. You need to change a class. You need to drop a class, switch it. They're going to be there to help you with that they really and because they don't have that many students to work with they're only working with the macaulay students they can better dedicate themselves to your needs and they're available i don't want to say anytime all the time but like you can ask them for anything and you will be supportive and it's not just in terms of school stuff also personally supported if you're going through something you can always reach out to them with whatever issues you're having and honestly also what Sama was saying that work ethic that Macaulay students have shows when you're in grad school, whether it's med school, just um, if you're in public health, if you're in med school, law school, whatever it is, our work ethic ends up being very different and it shows. So, so yeah. Okay, um, I would agree with that. I mean, all the panelists who are alumni here are all have this common, you know, grad school push. We've all been immediately enrolled in grad school from Macaulay. I finished my master's in a year uh, and a summer right after Baruch. And a lot of the idea behind doing it immediately was actually because of my Macaulay advisement and the push for it. I was indecisive of whether I wanted to start working to gain experience before applying. Um, but through the Macaulay advisement that I was given and the rigor of the program itself, I just wanted to continue on the path immediately. I was excited, uh, learning with Macaulay seminars that I had taken at Macaulay and the coursework that I had at Baruch. I just pretty much wanted to jump into the classroom again before starting work. And uh, I'm really thankful for it because all of the skills from undergrad and from grad have really 
translated into my, you know, my work now. Um, and I'm still using the same kind of outlining skills when I have client meetings. I take notes on pretty much anything anyone says at work. Everyone always hears me clacking away because of the notes that I'm taking. I'm referencing. I'm always using guides. I'm always pulling things up. And that is because I've been trained um, by Macaulay Brew for four years. So. So that's actually a really good segue into one of the questions from the Q&A is um, asking about careers and like career and internship services. I know some of you guys have mentioned, you know, your work and your internship. Did you guys get support from Macaulay in finding an internship or doing an internship? How do you feel Macaulay supported you? Did you use their career services? So I actually interned for Macaulay Career Services for a summer, which is really awesome. And they have a fantastic portal um, that keeps getting updated regularly. And I imagine now it's chock full of way more information than it was when I was there. Um, and that was really fantastic. And your own campuses will also have internships, which is really cool. Um, for me with my, I had, I think maybe two or three internships I did over my career at Macaulay. Like one of them was uh, actually in publishing, which was a lot of fun. Um, I did mention City College was uh, an engineering and, you know, uh, predominantly like it's known predominantly for being like a science based school, but their humanities and psychology program is also really, really fantastic. And they had a publishing certificate program. So if anyone's interested at all in that, their program um, is amazing and the internship is fantastic. Uh, and I did it. And I had to leave because of uh, Corona, which was great. Um, and they literally, I was there for maybe like three weeks or something. And they were basically going to set me up with a career in publishing before I had even left. So like I got in the door and I'm not even doing publishing. I'm doing occupational therapy. You know, it was just, a, it's another passion of mine that I have publishing a book, books and things like that. So yeah, there's a lot of opportunity. Um, and I think Macaulay makes room for you to have time to pursue other interests because obviously, you know, you're having your tuition covered. If there's a class you're interested in taking, you're not losing money. Just jump in that class and take it. And that's how I basically got this internship because I was taking all these publishing classes for fun at City. So. Um, I had my internship um, offer. So I, once again, I saw the, I saw the message in the chat. So I majored in accounting, um, at Baruch, which is not very unusual. <laughs> um, but I was got, I got, I received an email about a global, a global services opportunity, a global services opportunity in accounting. And it was through KPMG, which is an accounting firm, one of the big four, and you would be able to intern at KPMG in a location of your choice. I'm Greek. So I said, you know what? I'm going to Greece. I'm going to intern in Greece for a summer, learn accounting, see it through that lens. Um, Macaulay. So you can apply. I'm not a hundred percent certain on how the stipend works now with COVID and travel restrictions, but at the time, because I am a pre COVID baby, I guess, in uh, college, um, I was able to apply my stipend to that opportunity first. So I used it for funding to go abroad. Um, and I was in Greece for six weeks, interning at KPMG by the beach, which was amazing. Every day I had an iced coffee at my desk and a beautiful view and you know, busy season for accountants sometimes goes until seven or eight o'clock, but what does it matter when the sun sets later and people are just happy abroad? So I had a great, great time and it was a great conversation starter. Um, it looked great on the resume, which I actually had reviewed by both Baruch's uh, Career Development Center and Macaulay's, which was very helpful. Um, and it opened the door for many opportunities. And I think I also saw a question about work ethic, uh, about Macaulay's, how it differentiates from others, is Macaulay students are the ones who look for opportunities and are grateful for them when they, when they receive them, and then they take, it, take them to a different level. So I was so grateful for this opportunity to be forwarded to me through Macaulay that 
I, you know, it opened so many doors for me. I became determined to find more opportunities like this or even better ones, or just see, you know, how I can elevate myself and get better. And that's a common theme when, when someone has an opportunity, they want to take it to the next step. They'll tell their friends about it. They'll tell other Macaulay students about it. They create a network for it. And then, you know, five employees down the line, we're all working at JP Morgan. We're all working at, you know, the big law firm. Dwayne Morris LLP is coming to visit Macaulay students and asking them to come, you know, tour the firm, have a breakfast there. It culminates, it keeps developing and we look for them and we're grateful for them and we reach out and we network and we have a name for that. And there's a brand associated with it. And I think that is our differentiating factor is we don't take what's given to us. We're more seeking for it. And then once we get it, we'll take it to a different level and just expand and grow. Yeah, so I think those are all really great things. And one kind of question I wanted to ask is, you know, looking back to yourselves in college at Macaulay, even just entering into the program, what is something that you would want to like tell yourself in the future looking back? Like what is something, some advice that you would give to yourself as a college student slogging through, you know, seminar after seminar, common event after common event, like what would you tell yourself to motivate yourself and remind yourself like, is it worth it? I guess is the question. Yeah, I would tell myself it only gets worse from here. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> no, I probably would tell myself that to be honest. <laughs> um, and I, I don't mean that in a bad way. Like, I, I mean, in the sense that it just gets harder. So I want everyone to remember, like, when you are an undergrad, there is time to enjoy yourself and have a social life. You have to make the time. When you're in grad school, it gets a lot harder. So truly like do what you can to enjoy yourself to the fullest um, when you are an undergrad. Um, I think a lot of us here, we participated in so many extracurriculars, like clearly we have the time of our lives. Like I know for me, like the extracurriculars I was a part of was my social life, it was my fun life, which I guess sounds really sad and like loser, <laughs> but like, you know, like it is what it is, right? So um, yeah. Yeah, I agree with Sama. I, I, I would go back and tell myself to enjoy the now, even though you don't think you're going to, like the term that these are the best years of your life is so true. It really is because it you just get busier and busier and you, you wish that you can go back to the days of the bio blitz. Or to me, one of my fondest Macaulay memories is the night at the museum and Vicky did it my year. And we went to the Brooklyn Museum and the Brooklyn Museum is closed for the whole night. It's just nothing but Macaulay students and you just get to enjoy yourself. Like, I think just really appreciate the now while you're in college, especially in making friends and making the connections with your Macaulay peers, whether it's at your home campus or across campus and staying connected. And also it's really worth it, honestly. Macaulay carries a lot of weight. And once that's attached to your name, you're your foot is in the door, your seat is already waiting for you at the table. It commands a lot of power to be a Macaulay graduate. So that's all I have to say, it's worth it. Um, one thing I would tell myself is just make, if you feel like there's something absent from Macaulay, just create it yourself. Just because, you know, Macaulay does give you the opportunity to, to do that. Like me personally, I'm a black woman. So I saw that there wasn't really, you know, cultural clubs for black students at Macaulay, which is why I co-founded the Macaulay Diversity Initiative with Elise, just basically to, you know, um, you know, create a space for us. And all, it's also for Latinx students as well. And I didn't have the confidence to do that in my, you know, my lower years, but as a senior, you know, I really just had the confidence to do it and just finding someone or people who have the same, same passion as you, which is why, um, you know, Elise did it with me, um, makes it much easier just, you know, create that space and maintain it and with the Macaulay, so. And if I could kind of just speak on that aspect also, I think Macaulay is a fantastic place to find people just like you who are driven and motivated that work ethic, it's really not a joke. Like it's so nice 
I'm telling you, my group projects in the seminars, and we all hate group projects. Group projects will always be horrible. That's just how they are. But there is something so nice about going into a group project in a Macaulay seminar and knowing at least they have work ethic. At least we know, listen, everyone's going to have hiccups, but at least I know this group will do something. And that has eased my soul more than anything else. I have like so many group projects this semester. Not all of them are guaranteed with Macaulay students. And I do miss the seminars when I knew that I could count on people. But also just in terms of finding, forming clubs like the diversity initiative, we recently formed the Queer Alliance, I think only a year or two ago. And I think like Macaulay doesn't just have the space they welcome the space to. It is so easy to create a club. It's really easy to get in touch with people in administration. We have people in administration who are on like a first name basis with students who chat with them regularly. Uh, the student development coordinator who works with the student government, every single club, and honestly half the students in the program, Chris Diversa gets called out at every single event because he is just the person who's there for students and that attitude carries through Macaulay and I think that is definitely one of the strengths of the program and one of the things we really want to highlight. Um, so I want to add something real quick. Um, outside of Macaulay when you're looking to get employed or you're looking for an internship or you're shadowing whatever everyone knows what Macaulay is and they know we have work ethic. I remember when I was speaking to, I think a supervisor when I was shadowing um, and he asked me, oh, where are you going? I said, oh, I'm at Macaulay. And he's like, oh, wow. He's like, oh, so you're the really smart kids. I was like, okay. Like just through the name Macaulay, they already have assumptions of you. So just imagine when you're applying someplace and they have this assumption, oh, you're smart, you're driven, you have great work ethic, you're this, you're that, you're that. You, like they've already assumed that and whatever else you add in your personal statement or on your resume, it's just gonna enhance that even further. So, yeah. And I, and I think that's actually, that kind of is a very good lead in to my next and probably final question for this panel. Do you guys as alumni feel like you're still being supported by Macaulay? How does Macaulay carry through once you're out of it? So I have a friend who also graduated the same year as me, and she said that she used the services at Macaulay like two weeks ago. So anything that's available at Macaulay right now, you still have access to, even though you've graduated. And that's really nice. So. Um, I can speak on that also. So, um, I mean, I still talk to like Macaulay um, admin, just like regularly like at least once a month I talk to them and they're the ones who actually you know allowed me to create this event for y'all the accepted students day because I suggested it last year and they thought it was a great idea so um you know just like still staying in contact with me telling me about you know things that they're planning um things that they're hoping to implement in the future years um and it's it's just great like I still do feel supported I feel like they really do value my ideas and I'm just excited to see how they play out play out in the future so I would, I would agree. Um, I'm still getting emails from Macaulay. I'm subscribed to all of the email lists, you know, for life. Basically, I do check in on uh, Macaulay's social media page to see what students are up to. Uh, as soon as Ashley emailed me about this event, I just immediately replied yes, because it's events like this one that, you know, they, they drive me. I mean, it's giving back to a community that really supported me. Um, and so it's a domino effect from, from the great academic, professional, you know, fun time that I had at Macaulay, why not take the opportunity to speak about it and, you know, try to inform you all and give you, give you a perspective on why you should come, why you should seriously consider joining the community. So, um, mm. yeah. Yeah, and like I said before, I'm still very close with my Macaulay advisor because, you know, after four years, you really get to know a person and 
you know, I, I know if anything happens in my life, any big thing, I email her and I preface the email with, I still feel compelled to tell you about everything going on in my everyday life. So here's what's going on now. And, you know, she always responds and she's always helpful and supportive. And that also goes for other people that were at the Macaulay building that helped me through whatever difficult times I was having. And I want to take the moment just to give a very short, brief story. I won't get into the details. Um, but something that a lot of CUNY students don't know is that every CUNY campus, or at least most CUNY campuses, has an emergency funds system. So if something goes wrong and you need some money financially, some assistance, you can apply. And the thing with most CUNY campuses is that they're large. So there's a lot of students applying for these funds. And there are a plethora of reasons why the school might decide not to give you the funds. But because Macaulay is so much smaller and so much more tight knit, they have a whole bunch of funds that they'd be willing to help you out with if something should arise. So there was an instance where my mom had surgery, I was the only person working, and then something happened in the system and I didn't get paid. And my advisor was like, go to Macaulay, tell them what happened, and they'll help you out. And they were able to help me pay my rent for a month. They were like, all we need to see is proof that you did what you said you were going to do with it. You don't even have to pay us back. Like, that is something that they're not going to just do at any college campus. You know, Macaulay is down for you in every sense of the word. They support you all the way start to finish. So I think with that powerful note, I do want to thank all of our panelists, both the current students and the alumni who, you know, spoke and gave their experiences. I want to thank you guys, the admitted students who came to listen to us. Um, if you guys, uh, if any of the panelists are willing to share their contact information, like an email, feel free to drop it in the chat. Um, otherwise, uh, feel free students, you can always email. Uh, I will put my email so you guys can reach out to me. Um, you can reach out to Macaulay at social media and they have a lot of different you know, options. They can forward you to people. There's Macaulay Peer Mentors, for example, is a common program that mentors for people. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to thank everyone for coming. Um, Ashley, I want to thank you for creating this event, setting it up, and I want to congratulate you on this amazing event also. And I want to congratulate you guys for getting admitted to Macaulay and possibly becoming part of this amazing community. Um, I will, if you guys choose to come, you will most likely see me posting an embarrassing, cringy welcome video at your orientation. So. I think that is great motivation to attend. It's super cringy. You guys should do it. Just a thought. But yeah, thank you guys.